Hey guys, and welcome back to another podcast. So this is episode 63. I thought to myself, I'll do this podcast live because it's quite an important time in the OUNC community. There's a lot going on. There's lots of ups, there's lots of downs, but more importantly, the current mood and sort of heading um, and the questions you're asking is about the OUNC chain, its future, how it's tied in possibly to the TFL case. And I just want to kind of reassure everybody that we're still here, we're still building, we're still pushing forward. So I've got Strafe Colt on for episode 63. And Strafe's a regular visitor of the podcast. I must admit, I do enjoy having these conversations. They're pretty good. We have a lot of conversations, don't we, Strafe? Um, sort of just like every day, but it's nice to do these every so often. Yeah. Hey. Um, yeah, I think we talk nearly every day, yes, but... Uh sometimes making a podcast or a live stream is interesting yeah definitely so how's things been going for you strafe i know you're doing a lot with your tcg card game which is uh going forward pretty well at the moment oh yeah busy busy as always um still having to decide every day what to do at the moment where to split my time and uh, currently the TCG is making good progress. And uh, yeah, I posted um, some progress video and screenshot on the Galactic Shift account. Yeah, so we've got that up at the moment, actually. I'm just running it on the screen as you've been talking. It, it looks great, it looks really smooth. Um, I like it. I like things that are very visually receptive. They look good to the eyes. It's. I like trading card games, as you know, big fan of Pokemon, but I'm also yeah. a huge fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I actually play Yu-Gi-Oh! on my phone more or less every single day whilst I'm just sort of waiting for different things to happen on site uh, when I'm working. So I love card games. I think this is pretty good. You've been working on this for a while. Um, just sort of give us an update as to like, you know, how it works, what's the plan, where you're going with it. Yeah, uh, of course. <laughs> um, it has been quiet for a while, mainly because there were so many on-chain things um, that had higher priority L1 work, L2 work, and such um, yeah, project support. But recently, I've shifted the focus again more to the TCG. So currently, um, all the card effects, the abilities are implemented, which is quite a bit of work because there are so many different effects that yeah, have to be implemented. You can think of if you have 20 different or more different effects that card can uh, that cards can have, each one has to be implemented code wise. And then there are power cards that can be played trap cards. And yeah, it has all to be tested, it has all to be implemented to make it work correctly. I hope that we get during the next, I think, maybe two weeks, get it to a point where I can make test plays um, versus uh, better AI or even um, with a test partner, because currently it's mainly testing the card effects versus a very simple AI that plays random cards just to check if everything is working. So, yeah, st still a bit to do. Um, yeah, heroes need to be implemented too. Um, but it, it's making progress, and that is something I'm happy about. It's not easy on, on this blockchain, I must admit. And like you were saying, right, there's so many other things that we have to dip and dive and do on this blockchain because there's just not a great deal of people that are trying to push things forward in a positive manner. Like we've just got a lot of people that are just kind of stood around with their hands in their pockets and really easy and quick to judge a lot of us that are building. But for me, this is this is huge. I've been watching you build this from the, the very beginning since this was the inception of the idea, so to speak. But it takes time. Like I can't imagine how much is involved in just the card game alone, but developing Penguin Island and getting that to a more or less open alpha build, it's just been insane. And you just have to keep chipping away at these things. I mean, you have to keep in mind that we are not companies with uh, 
yeah, big teams in the background that have uh, venture capital or something similar. So everything needs to build, uh, be built either from own money or from funds that are raised by, um, yeah, by, for example, NFT sales or from side projects or from uh, token gains or whatever you're uh, you're doing um, and that makes it hard but um, also it is of course if you have a real life job where you can get some money for for project building from then yeah that comes at the cost of time you can spend on working on stuff yeah, it's not easy. I must admit, I juggle a lot myself. So just getting to this point of being able to launch part of the product, it's it's a huge step. I'm I'm really excited. So you're currently you you've got these available for Mint, haven't you? Um, yeah, the the cards were available since a while, but we have launched a second collection, the Heroes. Um, it's um, yeah, kind of your profile picture with uh, some special benefits when you use them during the match. Um, so no card, but um, yeah, but, but your personal character that you play with uh, when you join a match. Like an avatar. Yeah, an avatar, but uh, at the same time, each of them has a unique name and a unique description and also gives some benefits, like, for example, um, that you yourself or your your hero character that uh, decides when you lose the match, because if your health is at zero, you have lost. Um, so it gives you, for example, two bonus health points in a match or it... Um, gives you some extra speed points that um, uh, have influence on your energy recovery every turn, which you need to play out cards. So they can have very different effects that uh, can be beneficial in your, um, in your matches. Just sort of like scrolling over things um, here now on, on the TCG page. So it's pay, it's pay to earn, pay, play to earn. God, I have so many different like abbreviations for everything. Sometimes my brain's like, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so... <laughs> P2P, yeah, P2P, and where, so on. Where am I? I'm like Biden coming off of the stage. Where, 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 where am I? Where am I? Um, yeah. But it's play to earn, isn't it? Yeah, we're building a treasury and also it will be possible that you um, uh, put a fee into a match in the two competitions. So you battle your opponent if uh, he accepts the deal and the winner takes what is in the pot and uh, there are planned tournaments with prize pools and um, such things. Yes, it's a uh, play to earn. Yeah, it looks good. So we're just looking at another video here that you posted on April 2nd. So, you know, it's really smooth. It's not, it doesn't look like you've been rushing with this. It looks like you guys have been taking your time. You really know how you want it. And this is really good because what you're going to be launching in the end is going to be a decent project, something that's going to go the distance, it's going to be built for the distance, and it's going to be moving in one of the best times it could be moving, which is the halving event. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's uh, very soon, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we we will not be ready until then. But uh, I think the the effects of the halving, if the effect is that big as people expect, then it will, yeah, um, spread its waves for for some time longer. So uh, maybe it's a good time. Yeah. So talking about projects and and stuff like that you know, you have a hand in the, the LUNC Penguins website and we're going to be doing a big upgrade to that soon, aren't we? We're going to be getting yeah, tick, tickers yeah. up. We're going to be getting all sorts of different metrics up for these guys. They're going to be loving so, it. So kind of uh, a bit, um, yeah, a bit more in the direction of the Dash side, right? Yeah, definitely. That's what we're going to be doing is more or less taking what we've already learned and sort of built out as our brand so far and, and kind of extending on that. 
<clears throat> and keeping it as visually receptive as possible. I think it's such an important point. But more importantly, as you're talking about this and, you know, this is absolutely amazing. It makes me think about Penguin Island and just how close we are now to getting our launch for our first ever public build. And seeing you with all of this, it just gets me so hyped. And I think my Penguin community, you know, they've been waiting for so long, but I'm like Quite you. Well, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm exactly like you. And I think, but I don't think I know, um, we all launched on a blockchain that had far surpassed its trajectory. And I think a lot of us, we launched at the top of all of this. So we've had it so much harder, like it's not been easy. And it's not easy finding a balance, but finally being here before that halving event, it's just going to be insane. I'm so excited for what possibly could happen, but more importantly, seeing our communities flourish. Yeah, I'm, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not that much into Bitcoin, so all the halving event, um, I'm not very... Yes, I'm just waiting and uh, seeing what happens because I'm not that heavily invested in, in, in Bitcoin myself. So I'm just watching and uh, expecting the effects on everything else. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, interesting at least. I'm more loaded up on uh, meme coins at this point <laughs> than I am BTC. I'm not a huge investor in BTC because ultimately it's a market leader. You're, I think you've got to be a big player in the game. I think you need a lot of skin to be getting involved in BTC. You've got to be investing into whole BTCs. Um, but I know a lot of people do dollar cost average in, but not me. I've seen what meme coins have done last bull run. And I'm definitely not going to be missing the ride. So I've like allocated a portion of my dry powder specifically to meme coins. But in itself, the DeFi space is huge. It's pretty substantial. And the way this is all heading, DeFi is going to be getting a lot of inflows. And I think one of the key points to take moving forward into this halving event is the inflow coming into XRP's decentralized space. Because of the stablecoin they're developing, it's going to bring business grade stablecoins to the DeFi sector. Something that's heavily reliable. You could peg a lot of different things to it. I think there's just going to be a huge inflow into the DeFi sector as a whole. And I think it's at that point, right, loads of different blockchains in the cosmos are going to need to look as appealing as possible, like the nicest, ripest piece of fruit in the bowl. So everybody really wants to go and get involved in that chain. XRP is also something. Yeah, I know, <laughs> has, I know, I know. It is quite past, past <laughs> time, uh, really. I, I, it's it's quite hard to say that, but during the past two years, I was in quite such a tunnel that uh, everything besides LUNC was kind of faded out of my view. <laughs> and so it's, um, yeah, I, I need, I maybe need to broaden my, my view a bit to recognize what happens uh, on the broader ecosystems. But um, yeah, it's um, I have to catch up with all the events that are upcoming and the the news. That's uh, yeah, insane. Yeah, we're we're literally so it's the tenth today. Uh, let's flick to next month. That takes us to the twenty second. So on the fourth week of next month, on the twenty second, which would be a Wednesday, we'll be two years into this as a whole. Oh yeah. We'll be two years on the dot into this. Um, and we've put so much time into this chain, so much time. And we love it, right? We're not moaning. I'm not moaning. I don't know if you're moaning, but um, uh, I'm definitely every, moaning. everyone is moaning <laughs> at AUNC. Yeah, everybody it's, it's, is moaning. It's a hate love. <laughs> it's it is. A hate love. It definitely is. But um, it, we've put so much time and energy into this chain that a lot of the times we neglect our own projects. We neglect our own needs and wants. And it's, it, there's so many people are not pushing in the same direction. So it, it just, it gets so hard. So now I get exactly where you're coming from with that. 
So um, let's move on a little bit. Let's talk about the situation with LUNC, the court case, because a lot of people are definitely thinking about this. I'm so many, I get messages every day, the same messages as we've kind of discussed previously. And um, people are worried, you know, if the, if they shut station down, the chain's going to shut down. And, you know, what if the change, and it's, it's so hard to get somebody who's in a very panicked state to kind of grasp the situation that they would need to in in effect right go around and shut down 100 validators so you'd need i think we can run on 33 percent, isn't it minimum uh you have to even keep in mind that shutting down validators if those validators don't want to harm the chain they would not simply shut down but um, unbond and that would mean they would fall out of the active set and the voting power would be redistributed among the rest so even if you would shut down 50 validators among which um, maybe are 10 of the top 20 if those are gracefully shut down that means not just pulling the plug but um, but a clean unbonding then you would still have 100 percent voting power just redistributed boom yeah so to put so, it so to yeah. put it quite simply before we start talking in any more depth here <clears throat> there's no chance that they're going to shut down the chain that they, they don't have that kind of power it's too no. decentralized Imagine, imagine they would try to and would go to every one they can identify one by one and make them pull the plug in a hard way so the voting power is not um, immediately reduced to zero. Then people would still have time to redelegate from those validators and go to new ones that pop up in the active set. So the chance of shutting it, a whole chain down that is validated by so many different validators is <laughs> it's near impossible and the yeah, same and the same goes for the way. lunar chain even yeah. if they're let's say for example let's let's make up a, th a thesis right now and let's kind of study it that tfl get barred from doing anything in crypto and luna is left without a development team they're just well, in the same boat as then us. They wouldn't. I, I mean, um, imagine TFL would be banned from doing anything crypto. That does not mean that employees that are not uh, leading the company cannot work on crypto. In my opinion, at least. So you wouldn't necessarily even end up without any developers. But you would end up in a similar situation that LUNC was left in with no company lead. So like, <laughs> yeah. No, no, uh, like legal points yeah. to get listings and yeah. just someone at the top of the chain, so to speak, that's responsible yeah. legally for the blockchain. So it would be a looking glass situation, real sitting on the fence, watching the the chaos yeah. ensue because i've seen them discussing it i i've seen different yeah. snippets i'm i'm indifferent and people send me stuff and and, and they are they're discussing it they, they yeah, really course. are discussing it that of they're gonna they have are. to take over the chain as a community and uh, uh, um i see that too yes they they are playing those thought games because no one knows what is coming so when I did a video recently, uh, people in the comment section, correct me if I'm wrong here, considering we're live, but I think it was $147 million is what they have in their community pool. I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, checked. Yeah. Last time I did a video and I, I run the numbers, uh, so to speak. Um, and it was like $147 million that they've got in the community pool. So th their last payment that went out was to the TFL team. Uh, so let's go to community pool. So that was a grant of 150 million Luna. And that took their community pool down from 347 million Luna to 197 million Luna. So yeah, give or take right now, guys, it's about, let me bring it up on the screen for you. 
Uh, it's it's about $147 million they've got in funding. Now, it sounds like a lot. I know it sounds like a lot, right? But TFL, they've got to be able to cover all of these expenses, right, Strafe? Like they, they've got all of these court fees and Chris isn't going to be paying it out of his $3 million salary. So like, I keep asking myself, where are the, where are all of the fines going to come from? They'll have to claim bankruptcy if they can't afford it as to which case that leads us to the interpretation of they're going to have to shut down as a development team. And the likelihood is some of them would probably be barred from crypto might be but i have really no idea how those fines work in the us and how you can pay, uh, pay them or how you can avoid paying them or however I, well I'm i really don't think... very unexperienced in such things yeah so i'm i've got a decent i wouldn't say a decent amount but i understand the 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 way that america would go about it and it's similar to Operation Choke Point. If you've watched the video here on the channel, you're an absolute real one because you clearly watch every video. Shout out to you guys. Um, Operation Choke Point was something that America has applied two times and they're now applying it to crypto. And what they can, in essence, do, right? They can get CEXs to just delist the assets. They can force them. And it's done in a very peculiar manner by preventing certain banks dealing with certain people. And they just create choke points. So a, a big fear at the moment is that there could be delistings. Like, what's your opinion on this, Strafe? Do you think there could be delistings or? Yeah. I, I mean, um, it depends on, probably depends on what is more expensive for uh, CXs, risking a fine or risking losing all the trading uh, volume and the users. So it probably will be a business decision in the end, but um, we, at, at some point, we always talked about that CEX have too much volume of, of the overall chain volume. So I, I'm not sure what would happen in case there would be delistings. Of course, the price would probably take a hit, but Finally, there are many coins that uh, are doing very well without big CEX listings. Uh, I, I'm as I said, I, it's it's all like uh, yeah, like one of those um, situations where you can guess what might happen, and in the end, you are surprised of the outcome again. So. Yeah, I'm I'm not very much afraid because I'm always quite chilled about a UNC situation, even if I hold quite some coins. I haven't sold them yet and I don't plan to do uh, near future because it, in my opinion, it just makes no sense for me to do it. So my current thesis on delistings, if it was to happen, I don't think LUNC would get hit. I really don't. And here's my thesis. I'm going to lay it out pretty simple for everybody here. Binance. Binance would not delist LUNC, no matter what happens. They're too far heavily invested in it. They've lost too much to the crash and they burn coins every month. The backlash on that right now with CZ being more or less in the position he's in. We're moving into the halving. They're going to want all of the volume that they can get. And for me, right, I think possibly behind the scenes, if I was part of the, the strategy team over at Binance, I would be thinking to myself right now, and I would be banking on one of my strategy plays that Luna's going to get delisted and that's going to put LUNC in the limelight. And hey, guys, you know, if you come and you trade your LUNC over on Binance, we'll burn more. And I think it's all part of their long-winded play. I, I, I think this is Business something decision. that could, yeah, I think it's something that could pan out. I really do. It's it's interesting. I do, I do so many different things. I can walk the dark path in this situation as well. And we could sort of say to ourselves, well, maybe Binance are burning and using us as exit liquidity and kind of keeping us bullish. You know, you can walk either, either way in this, but that in my head doesn't seem plausible. Whereas what I just discussed, it does seem plausible that they would be doing something like that. 
So I, I think, right, and what everybody needs to understand is in that court case, in the documents, in the paperwork, it specifically outlines Luna and UST. And it's not mentioned about LUNC. But the biggest difference is, is they're playing it off as if it's LUNC that is the mentioned asset. And oh no, L L Luna V2. No, no, it's not us. No, no it's, it's the other yeah. asset, guys. Have you it's seen that? Always the same, yes. Because uh, if it's positive, oh yes, it's the new chain. If it's negative, oh no, it's the old chain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but but it, that's that's human nature, right? Make well, it it's business. Make it positive for yourself, yeah. and uh, yeah, avoid the negative. Yeah, they're they they they're very smart in what they're trying to do. I must admit, because in essence, we are a scapegoat for them if we don't defend ourselves correctly. That's kind of my opinion on it. If you allow those rumors to take root and articles start getting written by the mass media and stuff like that, it becomes the truth. Like we know about doing your own research no one really ever goes and does their own research when we say that <laughs> so, so it's don't believe what i say and what what uh, are people doing believing what i say right <laughs> but it was funny to see that i put a tweet out and there was people like you know we should sit around a fire and sing kumbaya let's all be friends guys it's like yeah you, it doesn't work like that I knew from the second once I had got that connection with Chris Armani and we discussed kind of a Luna and LUNC and them helping us and giving us like they weren't interested in giving us access to any of the legacy tools. They weren't interested in helping us. They weren't, you know, I knew at that point they weren't interested. And then as the court case thing started to take hold, it's just it's a very interesting situation. And you and I, we both have wallet infrastructure now, which the community can use at any time. And it's always going to be there. So we've like detached ourselves now so far from TFL that we literally have no dependencies on them other than that mobile application. Yeah, even that you could replace by Kepler Mobile. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That is a because a lot of people the di the biggest dilemma strafe isn't it with having a mobile app is basically we need a legal entity. We need someone at the helm who can yes. take responsibility and have their name behind it. It's not a simple just yes. ringing up Google. Hey, it's the Luna commu Luna Classic community. Oh yeah, hey guys, what's going on? Uh, so we was just wondering, you know, we we're thinking about making this mobile app, and uh, yeah, absolutely not. Uh, you <laughs> might even be able to get it into the Google App Store um, through yeah some google account i'm not sure about well you that, can but uh, ios no point well, no. We, a long time ago we walked this route you and i stewardship it was seemed like because no matter what direction we went in with that there was always a kink but if you hire someone to be a steward of the chain they're literally being paid to do that they have no emotional tie and it's all a legal situation so okay. that could be pretty beneficial for lunc i remember when I mean, we'll both remember when Terror Rebels first came about. They, I, What was her name? Was it Lex? Lex Dow? And uh, she was supposed to be the legal advisor for the chain, wasn't she? I can't remember her name. Guys, shout out in the comments if you remember the original legal advisor from Terror Rebels. Shout out if you know. I think it was Lex or Dex. Dex? Lex? Oh, I don't know. We'll come back to it. But... It's a it's a situation where we definitely need someone at the helm. I mean, I, what do you think? Um, the issue always will be that in in the crypto space, when you yourself don't have control about uh, over decisions, you are taking a huge huge risk. So imagine, let's say, um, the community would pay you whatever thousand dollars a year to take uh, stewardship and act as legal entity for apps or for um yeah for for stores and for cexs or for whatever but you have no influence about uh, over governance decisions and no influence uh, over the route that is taken so that means you take responsibility for things you don't control and that is uh, quite quite a bit of risk so i'm not sure who would take such a risk it's a huge risk it's a, it's a massive risk 
every single person who is trying to step up and like even remotely take a position like that is not here. They're not here. They've been bullied out by the the narrative, so to speak. You know, people getting docs, families getting docs, getting attacked. They get blamed for everything. And, um, you, you know, I, I'm not innocent from making a video and moaning about something. But ultimately, you know, I'm not on Twitter calling people uh, the M word and doxing people's kids and getting personal. It's, it's all just to do with LUNC. But, you know, I wouldn't want to take that position. No, no, I wouldn't either. Absolutely not. I, I mean, the, the only route uh, would be um, something, I think, that was also discussed multiple times to have some kind of DAO that is located on Cayman's Islands and uh, has no real um, juristical yeah, restriction that yeah, could uh, cause problems, but that is so expensive so you yeah you will need someone that handles all that and so yes it's uh, not easy i think have you seen the proposal up by any chance oh there's a new proposal <laughs> that's what i was like earlier when i saw it i was like oh there's a proposal hey it, it was so quiet all yeah. the time <laughs> all, there's a all like that <laughs> blowing the dust off of it <laughs> yeah. oh hey yeah, establish a Terra Classic team. Proposal 12093. This proposal seeks governance permission to establish a permanent team to work directly for the Terra Classic chain to be paid on a monthly basis. The role, salary, responsibilities, and no of developers is to be established in the following proposals dependent on governance approval as follows. Developer number. Num no is number for... Yeah, that's I what I... You're talking to a man who reads things backwards. Yeah. I have to read it backwards, then read it forwards. It's, it, it's a curse, honestly. So following the approval of this proposal, the community and the validators be engaged in the Commonwealth to decide the requirements, roles and responsibilities. It's interesting. There's no Commonwealth up for it, so it's not going to be taken seriously. But it, it kind of, when I see something like this, it kind of makes me think, you know, what are you guys thinking? Like, what's the community thinking at the moment? And... Because we've got Genuine Labs, right? And they are currently, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong here, but the majority of their work is is built towards opening up the lanes for Alliance and all of those kind of things. Yeah, I think they currently, um, was it today or yesterday, published the next bi-weekly uh, report. So Yeah, I checked it over, but it was just bug fixes and technical nonsense that realistically <laughs> just doesn't, B zero forty seven. It's B not. That's that's simply so. It's it's kind of all about um, yeah V forty seven to get the SDK updated and uh, testing. So it will still take a bit yep. until that gets live. But uh, when I read this proposal, uh, it, it's kind of the same issue that we have multiple times you don't need this proposal you can simply if you want a team you have to first discuss what team it would be what the salary would be because such sentiment proposals are always kind of a waste of time it's a it's a very interesting situation when anyone wants to try and do this and it's like what you've just been saying like anybody can work on the chain like anybody as long as obviously you follow whatever rules have been governance decided, um, you know, the, the grass is there for you to cut. And in essence, you could get paid for it at the end, depending on how you propose things. So it's there, the options there. So, you know, what's really funny at the moment, Strafe is the blame game going on of why like Vin left. <laughs> They're like, yeah, it's cause we can just cause KYC, you know, that's why he's left. Oh, oh my goodness! Okay. These guys make up this nonsense. <laughs> I mean, I I read, I read some comments, but obviously you get a lot more messages than I do. I I, I do mainly get some technical questions and um, yeah, and also the little bubble I have in my timeline on X is quite technical in uh, most of the time. Or some stupid advertisement, <laughs> and um, 
f from that point, I, yeah, I, I'm not really getting much of that gossip. I don't see much of it. I have to just like pause there for a second. Just the <sighs> some days my inbox flows like water, and uh, I've heard all of craziest kind of conspiracies from there's going to be a like a six trillion coin burn to i don't know barbara streisand's going to be promoting luna classic next week i just hear it all at this point <laughs> it's insane so <clears throat> at this point you know we're about halfway through this but what i want to you know in, stress the importance to everybody is this chain is safe okay no one's going to be able to shut it down no one can take anything from you more importantly no one can use and abuse tools like the wallet infrastructure again against this chain because you've got many different options i mean even all nodes provide infrastructure for wallets so you know we're we're smooth sailing on that part i, I honestly don't see any way that this chain could collapse in that way shape or form i think if there was a collapse it would come in the it, it, I, we've spoken about this before i believe it would just come in the form of a price crunch um that would really what would apply the right kind of stress to the chain and it's not that it would kill it or shut it down but it would make it considerably hard for people to run you know you watched as i run during that time when Val, I think my node was earning like two, maybe three hundred dollars a month. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm like spending three thousand eight hundred dollars on this thing to run it every month. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, I'm hemorrhaging money. But you know, I know what those price crunches do to people, and that's what I think we never want to see ever. Yeah, I, it would shake out um, many validators um, of the current set and other ones would probably um, buy in cheap and self-delegate a lot um, or yeah or there could be some kind of whale games played um, off the top uh, of the top whales on chain it's hard to predict but the price crush really isn't yeah it is not nice to see so i hope that yeah it is not coming i've been thinking about the the idea of a war of attrition like bite comes to crunch and it it becomes a war of attrition between luna and luna classic i mean if uh or if, do you mean if both would become community chains? Yeah, it would become a war of attrition. Like who, <laughs> whose community yeah. pool would last the longest? Whose who's Oracle rewards pool would last the longest? It would be a total war of attrition. Yeah, and it would be a war of communities to attract the people from the other chain. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Like I've already seen Hexagon. The minute, the minute that guilty verdict came in, they're like, you know, if they shut down, we've got we've got infrastructure. It's like, oh, oh slow down, guys. No one said anybody's shutting anything down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's true, yeah. Uh, but it's interesting times ahead, as always. I, I think interesting times ahead is uh, somehow one of the most frequently used terms <laughs> during the past two years. <laughs> <laughs> Literally every day I wake up, I'm like, what will it be today? What, what crazy stuff's going to happen today? Yeah, and you have to, you, ha you have to admit that the past uh, let's see four weeks were, in terms of Luna Classic, they were strangely quiet. <laughs> yeah, well, for me, that is cause its effect. Of course, it like it, that is a domino situation. Like literally. Vin proposed a payment for himself, right? His team to be paid to continue working on the chain. And it was denied. Like what yeah. else does everybody expect to happen at that point? For Vin to just be like, okay, yeah, okay, I'm working for free. No worries. Cheers, guys. Appreciate the kick in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, kind of the situation back then. Um, I'm, I think... At the moment, we probably are at a point that I personally didn't really like to see where the yeah where, where the review 
of the v47 update probably will either take very long or it will just be done via testing and not uh, line by line review we will see who wants to do the review i have not uh, not yet talked to others um, about that part but um, such an upgrade is quite a lot of changes in the code it's um, and it's more substantial changes in the code than for example the the end-to-end -end testing that was added last time so i'm um, yeah i don't know yet who will be well, um, reviewing it i'm interested to see how that will how that will go because while i think they are at least knowing what they are doing because they have some experience in, in cosmos developing yeah you still normally have someone outside the team doing review stuff so i think i am quite sure that frag and myself and i don't know about vin will will at least take take a rough look about uh, over the code but an in-depth review of such a scope uh, i think you need a kind of paid team like 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 vin proposed for such a big review yeah i um, agree you need someone like that i mean the chain has not been audited since this all started so we've had so many people work on this chain so many people that have come and gone that have developed stuff that's inside the code base it's... Yes, I think an, an audit would be somewhat uh, one of the bigger priorities once this uh, V47 is in place. That is, um, it, it makes no sense before that because so many things change with uh, 47, but I think it's necessary because, uh, yeah, it's not only a reassurance for for the people that are developing it's also for the for the investors for the outside um, that look at uh, luna classic and especially the terra rating on certic i agree so i just i just brought up the community pool on Lunk dash and i mean it's not like we're short changed uh, it's got... around six hundred sixty thousand us dollar there you go so for me, you would get a lot of bullish news from that on top of having, obviously, if we got a good audit, we got the thumbs up, we got the good score, it would look good overall. It would set yes. a good precedent. It would, like you're saying, it would reinsure our investors like Binance. Um, and honestly, it reassure, reassure a lot of us as validators. Yes. So I like to think that I'm quite an active validator, although I don't come on Commonwealth, I don't really say much i give my input in my videos and i talk to people but i feel like i do my part i feel like i hear as much as i can be and i'm providing as much as i can it's as a validator i want to know that this blockchain is going to be there for the future that i'm not building on a house of cards and i think that's what everybody wants to to know at the moment like all of the different people that have got their coins delegated with your node, with my node, with all of the different nodes need reassurance. And like a lot of us, we've been robbed of that reassurance. Instead, there's like, there's always been a precedent set of scams on this chain. And then the, the actual running joke externally is we've had more upgrades than Microsoft on, on our chain. But we've, we've... interestingly, other chains have far more upgrades yeah. than we have. <laughs> I was having an argument with a guy from Atom, and I was like, mate, you really want to start this? <laughs> Do you seriously want to start yes. this? But they yeah. raise a fair point because what the point that he was getting at is um we've done a lot of upgrades, but we still we just don't have anything. <laughs> we still don't have a dex. <laughs> the swapping's still not fixed, the market module's not turned back on, there's still not a USDC repeg it's perpetual motion still still it's many technical things that mm. tfl has left us with to catch up so Te that's, technical debt financial debt yeah it's, it's technical debt financial debt exactly huge. and um 
considering the available funds that were there in the past and considering the manpower that was there in the past <sighs> even if it looks bad it's not that bad in terms of technical progress it's it's quite bad in terms of um those things that people Go on, say wanted wanted to see from the beginning like like a chain owned uh dx or like uh yeah chain owned d apps developed especially for the chain and only for the chain in terms of um, of fees and everything else that that is something that still is not there but the chain itself the the much people call it um patching over and over again i i understand that because from the outside you don't see much progress but everything that was done on level one was kind of necessary to to get yeah to, to get the chain out of the technical depth step by step and uh, we are kind of a difficult chain in terms of the technical depth oh, we're not that difficult <laughs> well, we, we, we're, we're totally easy we we have a chain state that uh yeah <laughs> that blows your mind but um we are fine <laughs> where where is your gif with a <laughs> it's fine <laughs> <laughs> just everything on fire it's absolutely fine guys everything's fine stop panicking <laughs> stop undelegating your coins yeah. <laughs> um but honestly i'm still building you're still building a lot of us are still building exodus dropped a huge update today in their ama they did on twitter they're making huge moves miata and metagloria are also making huge moves lbk they're making good moves as well everybody's still building like we're all still here building but we're just knuckled down yeah it's it's somehow it has a, a, a bit um the um... The LGNC community has a bit turned the focus from the D app project side to the pure coin side, at least from my technical view at at the community and the and the um, Twitter post. And so there's there's much talk about um, about price about tokens about um, gains and such things but it's it's very few about um, projects that are not simply coin related um, so i don't know what the exact reason is maybe those people that have supported the projects from the beginning are out of funds and just waiting for others to also uh, support or it's simply waiting what happens during the next month if there is um, recognizable progress or they are waiting for finished products i i don't know exactly but um yeah at, at the same time i appreciate uh, those people that always have and still support the projects that are building um it's still hard for for many projects uh, funding wise especially um but also activity wise if you look at the discussions and uh, the reposts and such thing such things i can imagine i haven't seen it yet yeah, it's well. We dropped the we dropped the trailer uh, a eh. while ago. That was like the first <laughs> ever like when we were just sort of like sketching the thing out because, as you know, it started from a drawing, which is give me hilarious. food, give me food. I want more. <laughs> yeah, coming soon. Um, we are working on a lot of this. So it's that for us, it's the models. It honestly, it's the it's the models. It's getting the penguins right. It's the physics between the penguin and penguin action. And what what we're going for here, if you've ever played a game called Ghost of Tsushima, you'll know where I'm going with this. Penguins are going to be brawling in the shield wall. 
There will be feathers flying, there will be blood, and there will be battle axes. It's going to be insane. But the assets themselves, I just want something that matches the NFTs, that matches that style, that branding, the the way they look. And honestly, the first model, I've shown you the first model, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, I just, ah, Penguinidas, he's such a beast. I can't wait to see him just cutting his way through the battlefield. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm more excited probably than my community at this point. And, you know, I've walked on the the face of Penguin Island on loads of the different builds. So as they progress in builds, they let me go on the server. They let me kind of like nosy about and give my input on things. But it's it's insane. And what the Unreal Engine can do is just incredible. You've got the AI kicking in. So you've got the ability to really get into the mechanics of the game and as you know we've got nine clans and each clan in itself holds a very important part of the battlefield and it's all going to be very competitive it's going to be a highly competitive environment and i mean the only way to get access to the island is to obviously own one of those nfts which are long minted out by now so you can only get them on the secondary market but you know i'm so hyped up but something we've spoken about a few times, Strafe, is like a collaboration between Penguins and TCG. Um, it, it just feels like a must, in my opinion. An absolute must. There will always be ways. <laughs> well, like I was thinking, you know, it, because they're going to have their clan halls, which they're going to be uber excited to get out their clan halls and stuff. And like what I was thinking is there could be like an upgradable deck table. You know, they go to the deck table and then bam, they're playing TCG card game on Penguin Island. I mean, how epic would that be? Oh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. I have no, no clue how that works technically, but... Uh... Oh, dude, honestly, it's nuts. So the other night... So they'll be... <laughs> let me explain. They'll be developing the island and they have a screen as to which they, they're they live feeding the football game in America so, so they can watch the game whilst they're building the island. I'm like... What's the, what's the game for guys what's, what's that play that oh you know we're just watching the football and stuff it's like <laughs> wait hang on a minute you've got a tv in here they're like yeah we can just put it in the sky it's like you know i've got to work but i want to watch the game i, I, I said to them i said you know could you incorporate like a, a like a, a table with like pac-man for example they said yeah of course so you could have yeah. tv if you got the licensing and stuff you could have live tv and stuff and i thought that's amazing like when i forward think about that kind of stuff you could host all sorts of different things like for example you have all of these silly influencer fights um between mike tyson and jake paul oh my god he's gonna get destroyed but like things like that like i think so far forward into the future and i'm like dude we could be like all just stood there on penguin island <laughs> watching the fight live and it's gonna be amazing and then on top of that what i think's good about penguin island is it gives the users access to Exodus at all times. So if they want to come out of their penguins and go into a human avatar, they're going to be able to do that and simply jump straight into the Exodus world by just going through a portal. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got we've got a lot going on for penguins. But once again, you know, we just we're doing so much all of the time on this chain. So getting Lunk Dash back up and then extending out into the wallet infrastructure, I mean, that was we shut down Lunk Dash because everybody more or less just did what we did. Oh, um, yes. Not only that, because um, you always have to consider uh, which effort it is to keep that running and also extend it. So at that point, there was kind of the thought, well, we are at a point where this is no longer needed because there are other places that offer at least similar things. Um, so at that point, um, that was mm, uh, maybe not the right, but the logical uh, decision. So mm. now it's back, <laughs> at least. <laughs> 
So looking at price, it's not overly too bad because if you think about the situation, I've got the price up on screen now for people, but if we think about the overall situation, what we've just gone through, in theory, we should have dumped pretty substantially. I don't think anybody could sit here and say they weren't expecting a dump from that guilty verdict, but like we just haven't seen anything. Do you not think that's weird? Yeah, I think that's totally unexpected. Like... In effect, that was totally priced into the market. I think it's safe to say that right now that that has been priced into the market. Everybody knows that they're guilty. Like, there's not really a, a high chance of them being able to get a successful appeal through. I don't know if you've read through the appeal process for, for that, no, but I, trying I to so. appeal the jury, it's not... It was too. It's too far to the right. If it was more to the middle or to the left, they'd have a, you know, kind of a leg to stand on. But they got them bang to rights because they've proven that they used jump to repeg UST when it crashed previously. So it crashed and DK was like, oh, no, 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 no. It's self-healing. But really, it wasn't self-healing. They had used jump to restore the peg. And then in effect, that mess jump up and that's where it sort of began from there. Um so, but yes, yeah, I honestly thought we were going to have a big dump. So I think this is really good. And I think everybody in the OUNC community should take this as a good win and like push forward with this because we're a big community. In fact, would you, I don't know if you've ever run the numbers strafe, but we, in my eyes, are a far bigger community than Luna. I, I actually I don't know how active the lunar community is, but um, at least for classic we have the active wallet numbers, and that's um, yeah that's not that bad. I think if you check on Langdash, we have uh, over five thousand active wallets a day. Yeah, it's there's a lot. Like there's a lot of volume on chain for what really is a lot of us are sat on our bags. Like a lot of people have got coins and delegate. You've got them delegated and you're just getting your commission. So there's a lot of people who are just sat on their bags. I mean, when I check it right now, during the past 14 days, there were more than 30,000 wallets that were one or another way involved in transaction. Of course, that also includes um, reward withdrawal and uh, yeah, just getting fees from any any contracts or such. But still, uh, I think 30,000 different distinct wallets in 14 days is not, yeah, it, it's, it's not nothing. No, it's definitely not nothing. I've got the Link Dash statistics section up now. And for me, this shows good strength. It shows activity. It shows a buzzing, vibrant ecosystem. And what I honestly think, and I'll stand by this. I will absolutely stand by this. We are still a chain, right? We have a user base and we give them a hammer and we give them nails. And they're simply going to go around hammering nails into things because they've got a hammer and nails. But if you were to provide the chain with a vibrant NFT ecosystem and a, a meme token factory, or just a token factory in general that is all done on chain, right? You get a DEX, you get the swaps back online, you get the market more. Give them things to use because that's the key to burning through coins. You'll get a two birds with one stone situation where the utility brings more users in which situation is going to generate more volume and then that more volume generates more transaction more transactions equals more burns equals more overall everything and everything just starts to go upwards <clears throat> what i can't wait for is the game specifically my game as well a lot i know that's very self-centered but also all yeah. of these other games that are going to launch and are launching and you know shout out i think it's to is it garada who have the Battle Force games and all of those sort of like little games. Garuda with Air Force. Yes. And, yes. Yes. It's you know, it's a, it's a little game, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and act like it's a, you know, oh my God, it's, it's just groundbreaking. It's, it's a little game and it's fun, but they're, they're doing their part. And for me, that's like very honorable. 
to like look at people now and say you know, they're doing their utmost best and you know i don't have a functioning game so they're doing better than i am in my opinion even if it is a little game but if we just had more and more of that like more people building those tools the the chain would be buzzing like do you remember when all of the nft projects first come about and there was all the buzz about meta gloria lunar burning nights uh exodus um starship previously to that and yeah. everything was moving upwards and it's kind of the same with lunatics token as much as i disliked the way that they do things during that time because so many people were buying into the idea of burning lunc they were creating volume in effect they were giving users lunc so they were generating more users more wallets and for me we're in the halving event now and i just think just go for it like if you want to create a burn coin do it if you want to burn coins do it because the last time it happened it was overly bullish for us overly bullish and the only if you don't scam yeah, yeah of course we've seen so many scams i mean i was speaking to people recently who had been done toasted by cremation coin and i didn't even know cremation coin had actually burnt people and i was like oh my god really they're like yeah we got burnt so jesus but yeah, yeah, we don't we don't want any scam projects. Of course we don't. I That's... got burnt by Save the Moon. Oh, that... <laughs> 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 Woo! You're going back some now, bro. That was a long time ago. Yeah, that, that... That, yeah. It, <laughs> I'm a dinosaur in in classic. <laughs> You're a total maxi, an absolute maxi. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's not. It's not easy to go and do something elsewhere and, and because it does feel like you're kind of cheating on the blockchain but for me i can keep up with doing like a lot of different things at once and i like to be busy and i also don't want to want to live in this bubble because as a validator on this blockchain if I am to be a good validator, then I must have connections with other blockchains, other places and other spaces, other people that we can use and leverage to our advantage, as any smart business owner would do. So for me, I think it's positive when you start to branch out, you start to think about other things, because recently there's been a situation on chain. I, I, I don't know with the, uh, the Miata treasury. Like yeah, my NFT community, they were saying about it when we mentioned an idea about making a yeah. an investment somewhere else, not swapping out our whole treasury, but making yeah. a small investment somewhere else, kind of similar to what other projects do to try and build up our own treasury and our own kind of income, so to speak, for our users. So once again, like it's so important for us as validators to not live in a bubble. Yeah, it's, it's easy to, <laughs> especially if you dig very deep into such a thing like Luna Classic, it's very easy to get um, dragged in and um, yeah, to, to lose contact to everything outside. So I guess it's, it's, it's really something, especially if you manage to leverage synergies, then it's even more beneficial and it's uh, yeah even less feeling of cheating yeah definitely definitely the tech's pretty amazing and hopefully with this genuine labs update even though it is obviously targeted at the alliance system and kind of getting us incompatibility with that it opens up a lot more doors for this blockchain i, I still uh, i know that's a never-ending story but i still hope that text to guess will come to light at some point because um, that would remove so much um, so much overhead in dealing with deployment and calculations for tax and handling it's it, it would be really beneficial to have that in one way or another it would be huge we, we've spoken about this many times to simplify it for a lot of people it's in essence just cleaning up the closet and instead of having like four or five different kind of like gas tax and all of these different things we charge it just goes into one thing and in essence you hide that burn like it just becomes part of the the gas 
mm. whatever it ends up getting labeled i guess it would be tax to gas so it would be gas yeah. in the end so and i mean some chains are really cheap but some chains are really expensive for gas and for me a lot of the time it doesn't make sense but really what you want is just as many people deploying on the blockchain using the blockchain's technology and what it's already built and developed out on. Like it's going to be hugely bullish for Luna for us to go and use Alliance, Labor Market, Payment, uh, DAO and the Teams thing as well. Uh, and then obviously Foundation. It's going to be hugely bullish for them. And in essence, we're giving them a huge win. And that's kind of like where we're lacking as a chain so to speak but <clears throat> it's annoying Do, don't you find it annoying strafe when like a vote comes up for example like vin asking for payment and then seeing validators that don't do anything like not naming anyone not pointing fingers at anyone specifically but you know you see those validators that are huge they do absolutely nothing on this chain they're building on another chain entirely and they're like yeah no <laughs> so it's like what <laughs> how can you say that <laughs> Yeah, it's it's always the same discussion about um, yeah, like it's too expensive and others do it f for less, or um, at the same time, then uh, uh, it, it it's it's so difficult because everyone has a diff different viewpoint. For example, I can give an example regarding the the work on the v47 because that is something that vin also wanted to propose and there were voices that said well the three people team uh, too much work for three people where um yeah where one is um mainly volunteering yeah and uh, then when g labs propose the same it's uh cheered by the same people so it's it's not always logical argumentation it's also much about liking or disliking whoever propose um, things so yeah, it's quite a lot of emotion inside of LUNC most of the time especially when it comes to governance that makes it harder. What do you mean? Yeah, it, it makes it harder to deal with governance as someone who wants to propose things because you always have to think um, about all the different people, how they would interpret um, the text, how they would... Um, how they would afterwards um, try to to use it or um i mean i saw it with ppj it was obviously not phrased well enough it left too much room no, it was more the the general concept and now everything is kind of stuck with uh, yeah with that specific wording because people want to take it exactly like it's written and uh, that refining it was not approved and at the same time revoking it was also not improved uh, not approved so it's it makes it difficult to come up with something to propose because you always have to think of what could happen if it passes. And um, that's not easy. D, D, <coughs> D, <coughs> sorry, said that like four times now. It's clear my throat. <laughs> Do you think we have too much control over governance as validators and the community? Before you answer, I'm going to say that I do think we have far too much control as a community and validators what in, do you think in terms of uh, of what do you mean exactly overall like everything like we can change the parameters we can make a text proposal as to which if it p passes it becomes law 
Which is interesting, right? Because nobody wants to propose the double noding thing. Like nobody wants to walk that route. But if it passed, surely if the community's done the, for me, it's a vice grip. Like you've introduced it and then you're like, okay, well let us remove it and refine it. And they're like, no, you have to just stay there. And it's like, well, what do you want us to do? Do you, do you what? The, the thing is quite simple. If you, um, if you like something that is proposed, then you will, if it passes, then you would most likely be willing to interpret it um, in the way that benefits the proposer in terms of when 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 the proposer says it was meant that way and not the other then you would probably agree more likely and if you were opposed to a proposal that passes then you will likely yeah <laughs> or some people at least will likely use it as um yeah, not to say as a weapon, but at least as a blocker for for some specific things. Yeah, a lot of and, stuff that's proposed is abused and used by the narrative. I yes. will be the first to say. And re regarding your question, if if validators and community have too much control over the chain in terms of governance, I don't think technically, but governance is probably too much influenced by by lobbying it's hugely impacted by lobbying um matthew perry shout out to him nothing against him he wanted to make uh, voting anonymous but that in itself is a 50 50 situation you've got benefits and negatives to that because in, in essence, people can just be like, oh, you know, I'm going to vote yes, but really they're voting no. Um, in in fact, you cannot make it anonymous, but uh, yes. Um, yeah, of course, because pe smarter if, people can just yes. draw the information out. You, you, would, you would just put it on Lunk Dash. <laughs> <laughs> do, uh, doing a hexagon, like <laughs> introduce the rule and then be like straight on Twitter, like, and we've got that information available on Lunk yeah. Dash. Exactly. Oh, that would be a uh, dirty move. Would be funny, at least. Um, no, but um, the the lobbying is um, sometimes really problematic because there's it. It depends on the influence of certain people um, if they can sway a vote depending of course of uh, of the strength of sentiment of certain validators but if if it's kind of close if it's a if it's a split situation then the likelihood that people with um, stronger connections and more influence can sway the vo the vote is uh, very high And I mean, um, I mean, I think that I myself have quite some influence um, in terms of giving my opinion if people ask me, because um, at least I've got that uh, feedback at some times um, when I was asked for my opinion for a certain proposal um, via Telegram or something. But yeah, the most I could do would be saying, per, uh, I'm not commenting that on it until it's over. But on the other hand, we are all people that, that have an opinion of um, if a proposal is good for the chain or not. And so if you simply don't voice it, then you cannot complain afterwards if it uh, doesn't come out. Uh, doesn't come out as you would like to have it it's uh it's always interesting with the with the lobbying for me because uh, i've seen people vote yes and then like a day later boom they switch to no or even sometimes like almost like instantly they go yes then they go no um yeah. so we know a lot of lobbying does happen yes it it certainly does i mean my my rule of acting is 
I am not actively approaching other validators, telling them how to vote or telling them to change their vote. But if I am actively asked by people what my opinion is, I voice my opinion. I don't tell them uh, you should vote that, but I'm giving them my pro and cons. And if that influences their decision, okay, then then so be it. But this active lobbying is something I really dislike quite a lot. Yeah, it's scum of the earth stuff. Scum of the earth. It's, it's such a... <clears throat> validating so political. It's so highly yes. political. Being an LUNC is so political. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. I must, I must stress to the community: it's not like this on other blockchains. Although Luna do go through spats of the kind of political stuff, and it's getting oh, more and more I, like I think, that. Uh, I think Osmosis and Cosmos Hub are doing so. Uh, so too, there are also some political. Mm, let's let's call it tensions <laughs> yeah tfl have got tension with uh i think it's astroport at the moment as well there's like some weird stuff going on between them white whale and astroport from what i've been made aware but it's interesting it is interesting because what we could see and this is something really bullish for this blockchain is they just consume themselves they literally just consume themselves. They all just snatch and grab and take what they can. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting situation to see how this pans out because we've still not had like an official update as yeah. to where this leaves TFL. And There's still so much uncertainty. Yeah, so much uncertainty. And with DK as well, like everybody's like, yeah, I know he's going to South Korea. Yeah, well, that's already been appealed. So <laughs> nobody knows where he's going, but I personally think he's going to go to the United States and he's going to be, it's just, it's an easy win for Gary. My boy Gary needs it. He did us well on the ETF. So I think he kind of deserves the win. I know a lot of people hate Gary, but he's not so bad. Like he's responsible literally for all of this price action before the halving event, because this is out of character. I know you're not into it as much as I am straight, but this is totally out of character. Like we shouldn't be moving this heavily as we have been, so to speak. Overall, as a total market cap, I'm not talking about all coins in general because LUNC in itself has been lagging. Um, if anything, XRP is currently outperforming us. But when we move, we move big. We normally move in like three, four hundred percent moves, and then we have a really, really big cook off where loads of people try to undelegate their coins and. What I always see is like price action goes up. People try to undelegate that. Well, they undelegate their coins. By the time their coins come out of their undelegation, they're not too interested at those price levels. So they delegate again and then mm. they kind of get back involved, which is a good thing. It, it, it's a good thing to want to sell some of your coins. Like I'm never against anybody doing those kind of things and taking profits. I think it's really important you do take profits in this game. Like you shouldn't be made to feel like you need to hold on to millennium. But the smart thing to do is just to secure your investment, take a little bit of profit and sort of dollar cost average out and try to do it in a smart strategic manner. It's going to be a really interesting time. What do you do with your USDC strafe? I'm currently swapping mine out for XRP since the we mint cash situation kind of happening. Big sigh. <laughs> um, USTC. I don't have much USTC. I think currently I was. Uh, currently I have swapped it to LUNC. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I I was impatient. I didn't, <laughs> oh, you I didn't, didn't wait for a good watch. arbitrage. Yeah, I I <laughs> didn't want to wait until the swap ratio is at over two hundred again. So I simply, I simply swapped it. Nuts. I funded a little liquidity pool on another sort of like side blockchain and it was really profitable. And I got in and out of the liquidity pool within a good like amount of time. And um, that really kind of opened up my eyes to more or less having all sorts of like different liquidity pools and like working with other blockchains to try and make these strategic economic alliances, so to speak, where there's kind of a mutual benefit 
of actually opening up the doors to Alliance. Because if we do want to talk about Alliance right now, like, what do you think? Do you think we should just open the doors up and let more people come in and privatise off on that huge gap? And it's a huge gap. It's a huge gap. Yes, uh, the Alliance. The Alliance, yes. Um, it's... Yeah. Um, <laughs> would, I, would I be wrong to say they literally took IBC connections and rebranded them and added in basically B Luna asset? <laughs> um, you're catching me in a field again that I have not very much familiar. Familiar. Ah, made okay. myself so uh, alliance, into, but. But it's it's uh, that was the part about the the liquid uh, staking on foreign chains foreign chains I think yes and um, it it's always uh, something that can go both ways so it can bring liquidity in but it also can drag liquidity out so um, it very much depends on the on the loyalty but also on the possible gains um for the people coming in so i have not run the numbers i've done a fair amount of research alliance i'm very familiar with i've given a few sort of video on the subjects but the the core way to think about it is it's an economic alliance between a chain and a chain an alliance makes the bridge. Now, alliance can, like you're saying, work in our favor. It can be mutually beneficial. Or, right, they could just pillage and plunder our blockchain. And uh, one of the things that I was made aware of when wanting to use alliance is the percentages tipped in Luna's favor. For obvious reasons, it's their system, it's their module, we're using it. Yeah, sure. They, they have developed it. So everybody needs to remember, right, although using that is going to be sort of like in it's not going to be an instant use case but it's going to be something that somebody else develops somebody else works on and keeps up to date so there's pros and cons to this situation but i think overall right if like what's the chances do you think like of getting an on-chain dex like even if it's a version of astroport call it clastroport if you want no that sounds like a sexually transmitted disease joke um <laughs> claptroport no that sounds even worse uh um uh let's just call it classic port okay classic port <laughs> okay, before i get on a side tangent um the chance of getting a chain owned dex um, where the between between yes the, between uh, you and me i'm not talking about other people i'm not talking i'm specifically talking about like walking this journey as like an individual like, say there's the developer right now, maybe listening in the, the live. Like, how would you even, like, go about it? Because Vin was working on Astroport recovery, wasn't he? Um, yes, um, there is. There's a very, very big difference between introducing a new on-chain DEX and revitalizing Astroport. So let's say um, using the TerraSwap um TerraSwap contracts or the Astroport contracts and doing something new should be doable for uh, maybe two or three level two developers that have some kind of experience with such things especially when using um TerraSwap contracts i think they should be audited but at the same time, if you use TerraSwap, it would not really be fair because they never abandoned Classic. If you use Astroport in uh, contracts, the situation is different um, because that would probably annoy those people that have still liquidity, a lot of liquidity locked in the Classic Astroport. So um, the 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 um, way with the least causing issues would be to do something new but then again you would have the risk of rugging or 
or the risk of a scam if you have non-audited code on of a full DX. So <laughs> technically it's not that difficult, but everything around it is quite a bit more difficult. Yeah, the pools, it's going to be the pools, it, it, more or less it's going to be funding the liquidity for it, right? Yes, that's, that's one thing because um, currently, let's say you would open a DX with a pair of LUNC and USTC for the people, then there would not be much people putting liquidity in because every liquidity for that pair is either locked in the dysfunctioning um, Astroport or in Terraport or in TerraSwap. And getting a fourth pool uh, funded is surely not that easy in the current situation, I guess. No, it's not. And what makes it even more complex is all of the bulk spam coins. I'll call them spam coins because that's what they are. But all of the stable quants. We've got so much junk on this chain. Like, I don't want to say fork because that's the bad word. Um, but we kind of need a fork. Like, so we could just whittle down to like a clean slate. Like, it would have to be like a soft fork. But at some point, we've got to get rid of all of those coins because it just doesn't make any sense to keep them there any longer. Obviously, we can't access all of them. But yeah, but, but you have a, a very, very big problem there. Yeah, and I know. That is, if you would want to get rid of all the stable coins, you would need to allow people to swap to USTC because you cannot simply say you're wiping out people's balances. And that would mint, uh, I think, one billion. Yeah, see, I've got a better idea. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, sure. We make a third asset, right? Right? Wait for it. We make a third asset. Considering we're going to be using Alliance, we should probably use that asset as Alliance. And we should offer everybody who's holding all of that junk coins to get something back if they swap to this new asset. You know, we Mint Cash is already doing it with USTC. It's at what point does the chain say to itself, well, other people are just going to do this anyway. So we may as well do it before others think of the idea and be benefit and prosper from it. Because we Mint Cash, in essence, is able to build a good user base from the current USTC user base here. So that's when the siphoning attacks really kind of kick in. So if you were to introduce this third asset and say to ourselves, we have LUNC, we have USTC, and then we have BLUNC. And we say to everybody on the, on the chain, you know, here's the offer to swap into this BLUNC asset. You give us all of your crap coins, we'll torch them, and you get this asset in return. And then that asset could be built more or less up off of that liquidity and all of the people getting involved with that. Maybe do a little pre-sale for people as well to top up their balance. You know, it opens up a lot of avenues. But having all of those stable quants doesn't. Yeah, still the, the issue would be that you would need to offer them something kind of substantial in value to mm. give up on on the coins yeah but they're not giving up on ustc or lunc they're giving up on assets that are worth nothing that um, trying to swap them is going to cost them more money than that, it's currently currently that's true but before the market module was closed with the 100 percent tobin tax in fact they were just one-to-one -one swaps to ustc in value so if you had, for example, um, one GBPT, then that was worth kind of two USTC around that because the, the ratio was based on the real life currencies. So the swap ratio between um, British pound and US dollar. And that means that if somebody sits on like like TFL sits on 700 million SDR, I think. So they have no option to swap that right now. But 
one chain in theory it is worth around one billion USDC because that's how the market module was designed to base the swap rates on the real swap rates of the in in real life currencies so that could open some kind of problem when you try to wipe out people's stable quants or don't provide them um, some yeah some considerable value in turn even if the coins themselves are theoretically worthless they are theoretically <laughs> not worthless because they yeah are designed to be swappable uh with USTC. yeah so my yeah. my thought is you know those people <clears throat> able to burn all of those coins that they've well swap them for that those quans get burnt but gaining a, a valuing asset i think that's the important thing nothing's guaranteed in crypto everybody knows that anybody coming into crypto thinking that you're guaranteed to become a millionaire or billionaire you're kidding yourselves if you have you you're very 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 lucky very lucky very very lucky um but i think it's just <clears throat> it's an idea it's yeah sure it's a possibility there is no Some... no bad ideas from the beginning it's just that uh, they have to be considered thought out and discussed right let's do q and a we haven't got <clears throat> thank god there is not a lot of questions but there are there are a couple of good ones okay so let's do the first one uh so oleg the first question i'm going to say to you just go back and listen to the podcast we've covered a lot to do with lunk penguins so his next question is do we trust ustc uh, i do trust ustc it's a safe asset it's part of the blockchain it's part of the ecosystem you get it as part of your commission it's really important <clears throat> it makes <clears throat> it makes up a lot of the volume as well like the ins and outs the ups the downs so yeah it's safe do i believe ustc can be repegged absolutely not strafe do you yeah, I don't think the USTC repack is in reach. There's too much difficulties and too much uncertainties. And regarding USTC, well, it's uh, kind of similar to LUNC um, because it's also listed on several um, on several C axes and I think D axes. So uh, I, I I kind of agree with you. It's a precarious situation with the USTC. If you want to repeg it, in essence, you need the capital to repeg it. And then we would also need to remove the USTC commission from the Oracle Rewards pool, in essence, cutting your rewards. Uh, if we're, Obviously, if we didn't tweak the LUNC uh, ratio, but it's there's so many hurdles when it comes to repegging USTC. So definitely trust in it. <clears throat> it's not something that's a scam or it's going to rug or something like that, um, but... You know, it is what it is. It's it's a fried egg. You know, it's not a poached egg. It's a fried egg at this point. Um, and the would you say Strafe has been quite a lot of distrust zone with USTC without pointing fingers at anybody or naming anybody? There's been a level of distrust zone with repegs USTC as a whole. Well, it didn't change for for, for myself. It didn't change that much because um everything that was really was proposed until now at least those things i was aware of were so much depending on external entities that the chance in my mind was very low that this uh, could be successful so it's from for myself the distrust in ustc itself has not really changed much to the better or the worse um apart from whatever consequences uh, cx might um, consider but uh, no not not really okay oleg's next question <clears throat> is what will you suggest to do with lunc is staking on terra station still fine um do you want to go first on this one I think it depends on what you want. If you want uh, long-term holding and uh, um, banking on the long-term gain, the long-term price increase, of course, you can um, 
get the rewards in addition if you want to catch the price pumps or um, are afraid of bigger dumps that uh, do not recover in time then you probably should uh, keep some fluid assets but uh, yeah we don't we are simply not able really to give financial advice here because that would be not uh, allowed but Ooh, um, he's good he's real good yeah smart move i was going to say that myself um the staking of terra station the, sorry staking on terra station right guys um you're staking on the blockchain uh, yes. The station infrastructure you're using, being the wallet, the mobile app, the extension, is merely just a, a viewpoint, a visual, a tool that enables you as an individual to go and interact with the blockchain. So no but matter, go on. I want to interrupt you shortly. Sorry for that. I think the official terra station website still charges taxes on delegation redelegation and undelegation so you should maybe consider using the mobile or something like lang dash or the tc wallet hey slip that one in there didn't you no <laughs> so basically guys we've both got wallet infrastructure Strafe has his build. I've got my build. They both serve the exact same purpose. But the point, what we're getting at is, and what we've always got at right, Strafe, is you should never be charged as a blockchain for your infrastructure. And as long as I'm here and Strafe's here, that ain't happening again. It's not happening again. Um, so even if the mobile app does go down, right, Strafe, to answer Oleg's question, if TFL suddenly go, right, we're shutting everything down. They're just shutting down their visual receptive tools. It's as simple as that. You're still going to have access to everything in other places. And like I was it's saying, even, even all notes provides a, a very small amount of infrastructure, but it's usable. You can, you can send, you can transact, you can vote, you can write a memo for a reason to vote. You can do different things there. So it's not just me. It's not just strafe. It's not just all nodes, you know, even Hexagon, as much as I dislike them, they've got infrastructure there. We're so decentralized now on this aspect that it's it's funny. Don't you think it's funny, Strafe? I think we are at the point where we would have liked to be one and a half years ago. Yes. Yes. Okay. Next question. Oh, this is a good one, actually. So Lunable Lab says... What would be the final nail in the coffin for you guys on this chain? I'll answer that one first and then you can go next. Okay. The final coffin nail will be when I am in a coffin being buried, guys. That, that will be the final nail. And then my son will be my predecessor, I hope, and take over the charge with Luna Classic. Because if we're going the mile, we're going the distance, we're thinking about this being this community-owned chain, then I hope my son gets to take over my validator and all my infrastructure and keep pushing the Penguin thesis as far as possible. But you, Strafe, what would be the final nail for you? Oh, and indeed there is one. Mm. Uh, or there would be one. Ooh. A hostile takeover. Ah, no, I'd still be here. Oh, I'd still be yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it would be the final coffin in terms of um, having a um, sustainable environment to rely on building. That's a very, very good one, to be quite honest. I didn't think about the hostile takeover situation, which definitely people need to understand that that is a pretty subject reality that it's it's there. Like, we're lucky that All Nodes isn't a benevolent evil spirit that, that wants what the narrative want. Um, but it's getting there with the double nodes. As much as people don't want to discuss it, we, we are getting there. Um, so the the rise of a possible... not I, Like, it doesn't even need to be like a hostile takeover in a sense, right? Someone could just take over the chain rewards-wise. Like, someone could gain so much power, they could have like 10 nodes. And they've got so much voting power that if they vote something, it, it's going through as a yes, no matter what. And I think that's that's the danger. That, that kind of would be a hostile takeover because, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, 
no one that is ethical and has good um, in mind for the chain would try to achieve that one. I'm sw I'm sweating from thinking about like a hostile takeover. Ah, nah. I mean it's not very um, very realistic. I think because we still have a lot of validators. Um, Oh yeah, it would be, it, yeah, it would still be hard. And then, yeah. like I said, all nodes can tip any vote. Like yeah. uh, they can tip any vote. They're the deciders. Of not every not vote. any. Mm. Uh, so I think that we had quite uh, a few where they couldn't have changed the outcome, even if they would have voted the opposite. Um, but they, of course, have a lot of influence. And um, yeah, it's. As bad it might sound to say that, but sometimes I'm happy they have just because um, they have no not shown any bad intentions um, in in terms of trying to yeah take they're, take over. They're a business. Uh, yeah. I explained this they in my video. Business. So exactly. the. <clears throat> We can split hairs on this with the being naughty because I know they are allowing people to spin up multiple nodes on the same chain through their infrastructure. So, so I know, but they're a business. I expect no less from someone like that. Like, why would you say no? There's no rule against it. There's nothing to say that they can't do it. So, yeah, I, I guess at the current point, it's even worse because if you would not allow it, those people would probably spend their coins at the competitor in namely Hexagon. So I guess that would not be their preferable outcome. Right. This is <clears throat> this is one from Nesforce. Shout out to Nesforce. Nice seat here, dude. Lunable Labs, Tobias. Nice to see everybody here. Um, this one is directed just at you um please ask strafe if he thinks upgrading to version 50.3 or 50.4 is it a better option than upgrading to 5 50.1 as the release notes say there are bugs with version 5 50.1 guy needs okay. to get a bigger screen <laughs> um squint in to to answer that it's uh, quite easy because even if it was proposed at first, it didn't. It didn't pass, and so we are currently going with a zero forty seven. But if we would go with version zero fifty, then of course you wouldn't go with point uh, with point one. Even if this proposal would have passed with fifty point one, I am ninety nine point nine percent sure that the final upgrade proposal would have contained an upgrade to fifty point four or even fifty point five I think is the current the current version because yes there were bugs in fifty one uh, fifty point one and I think even in fifty point three so it would have been very very bad to just go with uh, yeah with that version. And I'm very sure it wouldn't have been done. Yeah, I saw the <clears throat> the pros, the cons, the arguments, the back and forth in, but the ultimatum was it's four seven. Yes, <laughs> I mean, was uh, quite controversial, but um, I still go with my opinion on that that we should do that and. Um, I'm glad we did decide on that and take some time until we go to zero fifty. Yeah, need need some more of the bigger chains to uh, give the vehicle yes. a test drive. Yes. All right. Next question. I guess this one's for me. Oh, I guess it's for both of us, really. When do I get to destroy all other clans? You have to join Shadow Realm X Communicado. In fact, I, I, I think I am the only one who ever joined Pink Guardians, right? No way. Are you the 21st guy? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> People keep messaging me and they're like, dude, should we just like get rid of Pink Guardians? I was like, what? 
what, what do you mean? Like assassinate them all or like what are you planning? <laughs> yeah, assassinate them. So something just remove. Yeah, just remove. Um definitely not removing them now we know that you're a member. Uh, that's for sure. So <laughs> something I want to talk about now uh, just at the end of here as well. Um, that seems to be all of the questions. I hope that answered that Nez Force. If it didn't, let us know in the comments and we'll, we'll, we'll try to get back on point with it. Um, oh, hang on, we have got some more. Uh, okay, this is a good one. Uh, how do we attract more game developers to the chain that regular people that can go to with ideas? I can't name anyone other than Garada. Um, so I would say if you want to attract more game developers and developers overall, I personally, uh, this is probably like a, a pretty mutual standpoint. Um, Strafe will probably disagree with me, but a developer's pool. It sounds silly, like, and it's just the same as a community pool, but for developers? Uh, yes, but, but in this case, I would disagree because um, I think what he's aiming at is people having a game idea without being a developer. Yeah, like they Fiverr. Would, yeah, yeah, they, so yeah, yeah, something like that. Paid and per you, job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes but the issue with that is um yeah garada uh, G garuda nah, garada yeah, now now you got me with your garada well you garuda. Know, tomato um, tomato <laughs> yogurt yogurt uh, <laughs> so, so garuda in fact is uh, a service provider somehow they offer um, some kind of casual game development and also offer their marketplace but i i i suspect they wouldn't be the right um the right entry point if you want to make something bigger like say um, exodus penguin island um, maybe even galactic shift and such things i think they would not have the manpower and the yeah and the time to do that of course i cannot speak for them maybe they would disagree but that's my suspicion so i don't think that you would have much chance to approach anyone with your personal idea of a game other than searching yourself for game developers um, that implement it for you because the the on-chain part of it is normally coming quite late in the development of course you have to be prepared for it you have to plan it in in terms of um, how do you want your in-chain um, your in-game economics to work but finally the game development itself is not um, not that much chain related especially when it comes to massive graphic uh, games like on unreal engine or unity yeah so that is a huge so, amount of work guys yeah exactly and so as harsh as it as it might sound as an individual without being a developer yourself and without having funds to spend on contractable game developers it's it's quite hard to get uh, get a game on chain done it's very hard very complicated it's not an easy journey by any means it's no. I, I mean especially if you are not a developer you have to rely on what those people are saying yes and, and that's that's a big issue because you have to trust them and it's uh, the the thing is let's say you want to contract someone for developing a game that costs 20,000 US dollars you won't find a game developer that says okay i build it for you and when it's ready you pay me so you will always have to pay something either during the process or even upfront and you are in quite a bit risk um, of being scammed and um, I experienced that myself for something else that's not related to the chain that was, um, yeah, on not on Fiverr but on a similar um, on a similar a similar environment. And so I, I don't know. I lost I think seven hundred 
dollars um, because I let myself convince that I have to pay something to make progress further. But in the end, uh, yeah, it ended up with nothing because there's even if you get shown some kind of proof like screenshots or code excerpts, if you're not a developer, it's very hard. Um, yeah, it, it's very hard to confirm that it's it's real. So you need someone trusted and the the more known those people are that are developing games, the more you will have to spend and the less time they will have to take on projects that they uh, see no personal benefit in. Yeah, it's not easy. So you can imagine how hard it is to try and attract a developer in the crypto environment that is developing a game uh, to the blockchain. The best way to probably go about that is to make the chain as appetizing as possible. And a good way to start that process would definitely be tax to gas. Um, that would actually enable White Whale to come onto this chain. And that is once again, something that keeps getting forgotten is that tax to gas actually opens up a huge amount of doors. Um, so what I've got here up on screen for people at the moment is more or less just our first trailer that we released for the uh, LUNC community regarding Penguin Island. <clears throat> and I want you guys to understand, like developing these things are insane. They're in like just making a trading card game is insane. And the assets, everything that comes with it, it's just huge. So like my best advice would be to you guys, right? Say you see a new project launching, say you see like a, a something you like, and they're kind of unsure and unhesitant as to where they want to launch, where they want to go. Try get them to come to our blockchain. Try get them to launch on our chain. Explain how good the technology is because LUNC is a chain that can interoperate with the game worlds that we're all building. As you've seen, Strafe is integrating his, Metagloria integrating those. So it's it's an environment that's ever growing. So it's definitely a situation for a lot of people that we rely on you guys a lot of the time to go out and sort of do the snooping work, do the effort and say, you know, well, you know, why don't you build on this chain? And, you know, if you are building on another chain, why not, you know, host Luna Classic there as well and, and branch out and stuff like that. I think all these sort of things are really going to help bring more people. If we're just buzzing, we're vibrant, we're saying, even though we've got all of the negatives and, you know, we know there's negatives, but it's, there's a bright future ahead. Otherwise I wouldn't continue to have my penguins project on this chain. I wouldn't continue to develop my penguin metaverse. I wouldn't continue to funnel money, time support into this chain every day. And neither would strafe. So we both highly believe in this process. We both highly believe in this blockchain. And I think it's a bullish way to end this podcast. I, You know, even with everything that's going on, I'm still super positive that we're going to where we should be going. And if all of us that are doing what we're doing, keep doing it, eventually it will all catch up. The use cases will kick in. The utility will kick in. Other developers will see that we've been successful over time. We've launched these products. They're working. People are using them. I think that's going to attract more people as well. What do you think, Strafe? I really hope so. Because, yeah, like you said, um, text to guess could be a huge thing for projects that are looking at the text and are saying, no, too much effort to just clone our stuff and we would have to adjust it. So I'm hoping that that is a solution that opens some doors. It definitely would open a huge amount of doors. So just quickly, we've got uh, two, two more questions. I think it's two more questions. Hang on. Uh, so if I understood correctly, even if Station Wallet closes, then we would just import our existing wallet phrases to another platform and all is good, right? Yeah, if you want to use a platform, if you don't use the Mobile Connect, and obviously if that goes down, you wouldn't be able to use the Station Mobile Connect. In that case, yes, you would need to connect through, if you're using Ledger, the Ledger extension. There's so many different options like Kepler Mobile as well, guys. I'll do a video on that um, to get some information out on that. Um, but other than that, Nez4 says, thank you for your reply. That answered perfectly all of the questions he was asking. So he does appreciate that. Lunable Labs also thanks. And yeah, I appreciate you coming on the channel, Strafe. It's a uncertain time yeah, and hopefully 
people will tune into this and catch up on this over the next couple of days and hopefully they get a bit more supportive of the chain and know that we're all still building <laughs> yeah we'll we'll hope for the best and expect the worst as always but keep pushing always always Guys, really appreciate you turning up for this podcast episode. What I'm going to be doing in the future is doing all of the podcast episodes live because it's just a good way for you guys to interact, ask questions, and hopefully over time we'll get more and more people coming in, asking more questions, and just coming up with general ideas because people pick up ideas from what we discuss. I always see that happening, whether it comes in the form of a proposal or someone using an idea that we've spoken about. It's all stuff that really helps. But guys, we really appreciate you tuning in. You know, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. There's a lot of scams. There's a lot of hacks. Just stay safe, you know, stay humble, stay aware. And as always, guys, we'll catch you in the next one.